What's up everybody and welcome to this video. If you managed to click yourself all the way here, that means that you probably are sick and tired of your NR3 V2 sound like a freaking hair blower. So in today's video, I thought I'd share with you how to change all the NR3 V2 stock fans and bring the noise level way down. When I did some research on this, I just couldn't find a complete guide. So I thought I'd make this video just for you guys. Oh and by the way, this is my absolute first video, so go easy on me in the comments and I'll try my very best to answer all your questions. So, first off, let's talk fans. And I don't mean all of my fans out there, I mean the stock fans that come with the NL3 V2. Now we're gonna replace the housing with a mod that I found on Cult 3D. Now this model costs around two bucks. If you don't want to pay that, there's also a free version. There's version 2 of this model on Thingiverse. We're going to replace the two Hotten fans with fans from Sunon. That's 20 millimeters deep. They use Maglev technology, which means they rotate based on magnetism. For the power supply fan, we're going to use a slightly larger fan, also from Sunon, that is 60 times 60 millimeters. Lastly, for the mainboard fan, we're going to use an Orion fan that is 10 millimeters deep. The specs for these fans are in the description below or here. With that said, let's get started. One quick thing to mention before we begin. This is the third version of this model. And compared to the second version, it has slightly larger ducts, making more airflow. And also the space in between here is slightly larger as well, making the fit a little bit easier. I printed this in EPLA from AdNorth, but the recommended plastic to use for this is uh, PTG. This took around 7.5 hours to print. I used 25% infill and 0.2 millimeter layer height. Oh, and if you don't have the right screws and nuts to hold the fans against the housing, you can always print these holder pins that comes with the model. There are sizes for both the 20mm fan and 10mm fans. Start off by turning off your printer and unplugging the power cord. To reach the hot end fan and the part cooling fan, there are two screws that you want to unscrew on the back of the hot end housing. Unscrew the two screws holding the hot end fan to the housing. There are three screws holding the part cooling fan to the housing. Start off by unscrewing the small screw, then the slightly larger one, and lastly the second smaller one. Cut off the zip tie to loosen the wires a bit and then cut off the wires to the fans. If you want to reuse the fans for another project, it is a good idea to leave a little bit of wire hanging from the fans. There is an extra hole on the modded housing to put the wires through, but before we mount the fan we need to know which way the air flows. Usually the sticker is a good indication of this. Because if you put your hand in front of the sticker, air will flow through it. But there should also be arrows on the side of the fan that indicate which direction the air actually flows. After we're done with the wires, attach the holder pins through the holes of the fan. We are going to mount the other fan in the same way and again take note of which direction the air flows. The holder pins can be a little bit tough to attach so don't be afraid to use a little bit of force. Before we solder the wires together we need to identify which wires are which and the only thing you actually need to know is that the blue wire is ground. I'm not gonna bore you with my awesome soldering skills, so let's just skip this part. Oh and hey, if you use shrink tubes like I do, don't forget to put them on before you solder the wires together. Before mounting the housing, make sure to remove the silicone heat protector. Now 
and before you screw on the housing you can put it back on while the housing is still loose. Make sure the holes are aligned and then screw on the last screw. Before flipping the printer over, there is a screw on top that needs to be unscrewed for the main board cover. After flipping the printer over, you'll find an additional three screws that needs unscrewing. Lastly, you need to unscrew the 10mm fan from the cover. When you unplug the fan, you'll notice there's a tag that says 24 volts. So when you change fans, make sure you have 24 volts or something like a buck converter. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be replacing the stock fan with a 10mm Orion fan. I put the fans next to each other, so when I cut the cables they'll be the same length. Moving on to the PCU fan, there is again a couple of screws on the top that needs unscrewing. Under the printer, there is only one small screw holding the cover. Also, cut the zip tie to the cables so that it will be easier to take off the cover. Then there is an additional two screws that holds the PCU to the cover. To get to the PCU fan, there are two screws on each side that needs to be removed. Also before you take off the front, make sure you remove the two screws holding the fan. The connector was a bit hard to remove with just my fingers. So I use a small plier to take it off. Here I made a mistake by cutting the wires of the stock fan way too low. So when I sold the wires of the new fan, I had to cut some of the white heat protector tube to make it fit. The screws are a little bit wider than the holes on the new fan, but not to worry, with the help of a little bit of force they'll go right through. Before putting on the mainboard cover, you can pull the wires going to the hot end fans so that the wires will straighten out. Lastly, I put a couple of zip ties to hold the tubes and the wires together so that everything looks neat and tidy. So, now that we are finished with the step-by-step -step guide, let's take a look at the results. I downloaded an app called Soundmeter to measure the noise level on both the QuietFan mod and the stock setup. And weirdly enough, the noise level on the QuietFan mod was higher than the stock setup. However, I have no idea how accurate this app is and if the phone is actually telling the exact noise level. So take it with a grain of salt. Now I'm going to show you two videos. The first video is of a print from the stock setup. I have the camera about one meter away from the printer and I'll also show you the noise level on my phone. The second video is from a print with the quiet fan mod. Again, the camera is about one meter away from the printer and I'll also show you the noise level with my phone.
As you can see and hear, the noise level on the quiet fan mode is much lower than the stock setup, in spite of the phone actually showing the noise level are higher. Now the question is, was it all worth it? I definitely think so. I have this printer sitting next to my desk and it prints several hours during the day. And now with the quiet fan mode, this becomes much more bearable. Even my girlfriend doesn't complain anymore about the printer. Also the print quality is still very good, if not better. If you did this step by step guide, please drop a comment below and tell me how it went. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very helpful. Good luck with your project and happy modding!